Well, it's finally time to cover Dynasty Warriors 9 and see for myself if it's truly one of the worst games of all time and the worst Dynasty Warriors. Though Origins is looking very much like the worst one so far. Only time will tell. However, we must focus right now on our efforts to review the last three DW games I have left. Those being DW9, DW9E, and DW7E. I'm hoping to still get all three of these done before January. Interesting. I like it. We shall proceed with your proposal. Well, it turns out that yes, as to the question of, is Dynasty Warriors 9 the worst one and one of the worst games of all time? That answer is simple. You either have to watch the entire review or skip to the very end like it's an IGN video to find out. This is a most deplorable sight. I never expected to see the land in such a poor and wretched state. For now, let's just get this one over with and move on with our lives. This game is truly a flawed identity crisis of a game. I have never played a game so butchered and mediocre like this. Well, since Battlefield 2042. That wasn't Battlefield, it was Overwatch meets Call of Duty Warzone. I agree. Dear God, what a mistake that one was. Yeah. True that. Now that's true, that. true granddad. Three fuck-ups in a row and DICE is still not shut down? Sorry, but EA, do the right thing and just close down DICE and Bioware. And while we're at it, just close down a Mega Force as well. Okay, Tech McCoy? This isn't the time for jokes. I'm simply trying to do my best here given the situation. Anyways, let's jump into the battlefield and see why Dynasty Warriors 9 is such a mentally ill, flawed experience. Many lives are likely to be lost on this path. However, it is a pain we must endure to end the chaos. Everybody, I ask that you join me in search of the greater good. Let's go. First thing first, the new characters. They all suck, they all look generic, they all have terrible voice actors and zero personality to boot. It's just a repeat of Dynasty Warriors 8 in this regard. Just don't bother, as I'm not going to bother as well. In fact, there's not a single one that stands out. While DW8XL had Lou Boo's daughter, this game has nothing. Not a single waifu or badass. Nobody is memorable. Just all generic anime tropes that you just want to blow to smithereens with an AR-15. Clearly without rules, there is not much separating people from mere beasts. So, let's move on to the combat and be done with this shit game. I never wanted to review it, but I need to review every single one of these pieces of shit games before January. So, the combat. It fucking sucks as well. What are you trying to say? They took the classic combat system and tried to make it more advanced. Except... That's an illusion. It's now just more clunky, repetitive, and spongy. As you mash your face buttons, you can only do a small selection of combos and attacks. <laughs> to do your usual square square triangle combo attack, you must now hold R1 and press the corresponding face button to do a move. Yep, they just butchered the old system and made things more clunky. On top of that, the combat is way more sluggish than DW8. How the hell do you do that? This combat system is worse than Dynasty Warriors 2. I'd rather go play Dynasty Warriors 6 with its Renbu system. Uh, 
They made all enemies spongy, including generic soldiers. Now it takes dozens of hits to kill all enemies. Even the deer you can hunt are spongy. Ho oh, what? No matter your level, no matter your weapon, no matter your attack, even a Masuo won't do much damage to enemies. They're naturally spongy to drag out all encounters. Ah, this is an open world game. They padded the fuck out of this game. Good job on continuing that horrible western open world game trope of making everything spongy and repetitive. <laughs> Far Cry called. It wants its cliches back. Your bravery and wisdom are befitting a true warrior of the Three Kingdoms. Don't help either that the AI is passive as all hell. Yep, they copied Far Cry again. Then again, most of the time the AI barely even reacts to your presence. It's like the engine cannot run the AI code at the same time as it's rendering all the bullshit on screen. How do you have worse AI? Then Far Cry 5. So don't bother chasing me. You are simply amazing in battle. So, so, <clears throat> is there a key to this sponginess? Is there a way to counter it? Why, yes, there is. Of course. The combat all boils down to knockdowns now. Yep, it's all about knocking down your opponents and waiting for the triangle button to appear above them to one-shot all enemies. Want to defeat an officer? Beat them up for about 15 to 25 minutes till a triangle or the Y button, if you're on PC, to appear, and then, if you pull it off right, you can one-shot them. That's it! Such impressive might. I must begrudgingly respect your ability. What the fuck? Since the combat system sucks, might as well mention they removed the dual weapon system. Yeah, now everyone is back to using a single weapon. Also, most officers are using clone generic weapons like spears, swords, and the infamous ball on a chain and ball on a stick. What was neat to see with officers using each other's movesets as a secondary on top of their primary in DW7 and DW8 was gutted. But hey, at least the horse combat is good. Right? What? What is this? No. They, of fucking course, made the horse combat and movement way worse and less fluid than DW8. Just how and why did they do this? Horses feel like dragging your nutsack on sandpaper while singing Rebecca Black's Friday. Nothing feels polished at all, unlike your smoothed nutsack from the sandpaper, that is. Shing. Sparkle, sparkle. Even the combat on horses is terrible. Jesus H. Christ, does it feel like we went back to the PlayStation 2 era of Warriors games? Oh, speaking of PS2 era Warriors games, they brought back the bow. Really? Oh, thank God! Oh, thank God! Except... Ah, boy, here we go. It also sucks. The only good thing about the bow is the default arrows are now infinite, and you can freely move with it drawn. However, this feels so clunky and intuitive to use. I 
I just can't with you Dynasty Warriors. Oh, this game sucks ass. Oh, you do complain a lot. So, the last thing about the combat before we talk about the main concept behind DW9 is how every battle is literally the same exact thing. I cannot remember a single fight that was memorable in the slightest. Everything is samey as all hell. Like any open world game, you literally have copy and pasted encounters. Hulao Gate was the same as Sishui Gate, as the Yellow Turban Rebellion. All cities are the same, all field battles are the same. I cannot remember a single iconic moment from DW9. Why God? So yeah. Now we move on to the open world. Oh boy. What is the point of an open world Dynasty Warriors game? Like seriously, there's no real reason to do this, unless Omega Force was just so desperate to stay relevant and decided... <coughs> hey, we need to rip off every western game released since 2011 in our own game and we'll make that Skyrim money. Except, that didn't happen. And even the Japanese fan base hated this game with a passion. The only people who liked the open world were fanboys who love everything, aka the r slash Dynasty Warriors subreddit, or normies who aren't fans of the series. Even then, those are so very few people, this game didn't, up, didn't end up selling well enough for a mega force. Nor was it well received by even critics. When IGN says you fucked up Dynasty Warriors, that's saying something since they're the largest haters of the series than even Jim fucking Sterling's son. <laughs> exactly right. The open world is so boring as there's nothing to do in it. At first I thought, oh maybe it's not so bad, but, but, and I have a very big butt here. Uh oh. After playing for only five minutes, I was already bored and saw everything there was to this game. It's an overly large open world of nothingness. Straight out of Ubisoft's womanizing headquarters of creative bankruptcy. I just cannot comprehend what I'm supposed to do in this game as I run very slowly to an objective that's over 10 real time minutes away. This game is truly a virtual Ohio. Yes. As you run around aimlessly, you will encounter orange icons on the map. These are bandits. They're very spudgy enemies that offer nothing in turn but experience, I guess, as you slay them over the course of several freaking real world time hours. They're always stronger than you. Then again, the entire combat system is spongy, repetitive garbage. So, what else is new? Pathetic! Any drudge can handle patrol duties. So, why are they here? To make the world not entirely empty is all, and they're not alone, as you will encounter other things out there in the world. Yep, you can go hunting. Yay! Except it sucks, as Dynasty Warriors 9 Combat doesn't work with fast moving animals that run all around. Sure, you can use the bow, but it still sucks, so it shouldn't have been brought back at all. You just slaughter brain dead tigers, deer, and wolves to get materials, to craft more potions, and other stupid shit that doesn't matter at all. 
these only exist because Omega Farce is so desperate to copy every terrible open world trope imaginable. Based. But then again, what else is new with this game? But hey, at least we can run around and auto pick up herbs. Yay? Yeah, you can run around during war to gather herbs. Oh, is the Yellow Turban Rebellion happening? Are my oh, is my ally forces getting wrecked by the Yellow Turban Rebellion? Too bad. I gotta collect licorice. Yes, I need to collect a bunch of licorice in order to make potions for a side quest. This is more important than fighting in wars. You know, who wants to go and fight and break a nail? We gotta go outside and pick licorice and craft things. And then later on, we're gonna form a little social circle and talk about our feelings and talk about how the pink color works better with our skin tones. In that Brad totally likes Becky, but Becky doesn't isn't totally like Brad because Becky's like gay. I never want to hear that shit again. Yeah, and there's a ton of requirements just to progress in the game. Want to participate in the Battle of Cherby? You can't. Not unless you do several side quests like escorting people around, gathering herbs, gathering wood, gathering wolf pelts, gathering fish, and more. What kind of bullshit system is this? I want to play Dynasty Warriors to play Dynasty Warriors, not do Bethesda side quests. Who wants Radiant quests in a freaking Dynasty Warriors game? Let me slaughter thousands of soldiers and get into fights with unique officers with kick-ass music in the background. But no. This settlement needs your help. Here, let me mark it on your map. Fucking... Bullshit. Gay, totally gay. So, what do you do with all these items you can gather? Simple, you're now able to craft potions. Fuck yeah, totally revolutionary and original concept for a video game that hasn't existed ever, right? Yep, that's all there is to this game. You cannot do anything else really with the stuff. Oh, but what about the towns? Surely you can buy stuff, right? Right? Ah, don't make me laugh. Not really. If you want new weapons, horses, healing items, etc., you need the ingredients from hunting, fishing, and gathering stuff throughout the game. Yeah, so food vendors don't sell food. You have to bring the food to them to cook the food. Makes about as much sense as going to a food cart in the city and being told you need to go buy a package of hot, hot dogs at your local grocery store to bring to them so you can cook it yourself and then you can eat. What the fuck? Makes sense. The only good thing in this game that I enjoyed and barely was fishing. Yes, you can fish in Dynasty Warriors 9. But it's nowhere near as good as Samurai Warrior Spirit of Sanada was. Instead of things of being more lively and engaging, and here everything is more stiff, lifeless, robotic, and anticlimactic. Kind of like sex with a virgin. Also, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Once you acquire bait, you could go up to any body of water. And with the bait equipped in your items, you can fish there. As you wait for a bite, the action button will change, and you must mash it to catch something. <laughs> Had the fishing been more engaging, I'd probably enjoy it more. But it's just fine as it is. I can't expect much from Dynasty Warriors 9 at this point. I mean, it's Dynasty Warriors motherfucking 9. One of the worst motherfucking games of all fucking time. Fuck this fucking game. Fuck. Wow. 
What were they thinking? They chose lazy robotic conversations for majority of storytelling for what little there is. UN and Shaho Doom. A man of keen judgment and decisive personality. This is so boring and drags on. Is this a test? A test to see how much patience the average person has for terrible storytelling? Hmm. I suppose so. This is just a major downgrade from the last two entries, which did everything so much better. And I was not a fan of Dynasty Warriors 8 in the slightest, really. Oh dear god, speaking of downgrades, they got rid of every English voice actor. Omega Farce wanted to cut corners to tap into the Chinese market instead. So, they put all voice acting funds towards Mandarin instead of English, once again proving how very little effort they put into releasing these games overseas. So get ready for some of the worst voice acting and miscastings of all time. It's like as if they went to a local Dollar General to hire people. Oh, and Yan Ya was there to really ruin everything too. Seriously, did they get Yan Ya to, to voice Lu Bu? He sounds awful! The Emperor means nothing to me. What about the battle I was promised? I came here because I heard the Ten Eunuchs and He Jin were causing trouble. But now that I'm here, the whole thing is over. Who the fuck are you? Looking back, even Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends Complete Edition had better cinematics than this game. In fact, this game lacks cinematics, as everything is basically all real-time robotic stiff conversations rather than actual cinematics, like we once had in the past. Here is a short comparison. the south, now the north. We've hardly had time to breathe. The fault is mine alone. All of this is due to the mistake I made at Cherby. The wretched state of this region appears to have been caused by more than just the yellow turbans. There must be something else behind it as well. Hmm? Excuse me. I heard that you are here to help put down the yellow turbans. Yes, that is correct. Are you also a member of our cause? My name is Soon Jian. Like you, I am part of the subjugation force assembled by the Imperial forces. Shit the fuck! <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Just talk about a total downgrade. My god. Before every battle, before every conversation, and even afterwards, you will always get 10 second to 20 second loading screens. How is this an open world game? Even Starfield doesn't have this many loading screens or long loading screens. Eventually, everything just becomes too overwhelming as I keep playing and just keep seeing the same exact loading screen with varying load times. I just can't take it anymore. <laughs> Not a single track from Dynasty Warriors 9 is memorable. Everything is generic as can be. Just like Dynasty Warriors 8, there's nothing here worth mentioning. In fact, even though I'm using the music from DW9 in this very review, you probably couldn't tell it was Dynasty Warriors because it sounds so generic. You probably think I got it from YouTube Audio Library or some other stock site for music. So, let's move on and skip the music montage once again. Hmm. Fair enough. This game runs like complete 
Dookie. Tons of hiccups from the frame rate going too high and everything speeds out of control or the game chugs worse than people's hearts at a queso look-alike charity marathon conquer this land remain you are now our allies in front of sushui gate have been defeated we will avenge them ever since dynasty warriors 3 we had the ability to play these games in two-player local co-op via split screen. That was removed in this entry. It's entirely single player, and I could see why. No one would want to play this piece of shit with someone else, unless it was against their will. Dynasty Warriors 9 should be used as an alternative to waterboarding. I ain't even, I ain't even going near that. After this train wreck, I'm glad to say, the next two games will be much easier to get through and review. The Empire's expansions are just usually always the better experience for this anciently long-running franchise. Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires and Dynasty Warriors 7 Empires will be done soon, hopefully. After that, we can finally say, I reviewed every Dynasty Warriors game right before the next failed abortion arrives in January. That is, Dynasty Warriors Origins. What they... What they did to Jean Ha! At the end of the day, Dynasty Warriors 9 is a garbage game not worth playing. I'd rather get a colonoscopy with a porcupine. I'd rather go to a flat earth convention. I would rather vote libertarian. Okay, maybe not that far, but you get it. This game fucking sucks. It sucking fucks, it fucking sucks, it fucking blows, it's a piece of shit, and I don't like it. Anyways, that's it for this video. See you all later. If the demons in my head haven't taken over after all this bullshit. I'm off my meds! <laughs>《この地我が地楽で守ってみせよ》I guess it's time to review Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires, the very last Empires game to date as of 2024 for this long-running series. Oh boy howdy, did they go out with a clown show. This game is completely broken, fugly, and not fun at all to play. What do you mean? This port is so unplayable, I just gave up and didn't even finish it, cause it's that bad of a game. You literally cannot play through DW9E, from clunky controls to poorly hard-coded inputs that cannot be changed, or even the fact this game has the worst officer edit since DW4E. Oh, oh, no shit? I guess we might as well get this one over with, since it won't probably be that long in comparison to the last few Warriors reviews anyways. Really? Oh thank god! Oh thank god! Sadly, what should have been built off of the amazing framework of Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires was scrapped in favor of the garbage game Neo. Yeah, they just took assets from Neo character creator and ported it into Dynasty Warrior 9 Empires. So all characters look the same and cannot really be sculpted in comparison to previous games. What also sucks is the PC port of this game is broken as controls are wonking out and not working like displayed. Instead the face buttons are all hard coded to the RB button, so R1 has 5 buttons programmed to it now. You have to use the keyboard to navigate officer edit UI and the right analog stick on your controller to rotate the camera around during editing. Excuse me why? No matter what sliders or presets you use, get ready for every officer you make to have the same face syndrome aka a terrible character creator. Everyone looks the same no matter what I try to do. The same body type, the same eyes, the same nose, the same mouth, the same jawline and chin, you name it. The only thing that was different was facial hair, head hair, outfit, skin color, and hair slash outfit colors. You cannot make people accurately as before on DW8E. So no Queso, Schlatt, Cloud, Tifa, Barrett, JonTron, Scott the Waz, G-Man Lives, Civi11, Hashtag Free Civi, you name it. The editor just doesn't allow for any degree of variety. Ah, you know what? 
This sucks! So yep, that means I couldn't even make half of the real world people I know of in DW90. Meanwhile in DW80, I got Angry Joe Show, Alex, Other Joe, Queso, Avalanche, Shenra, Maximilian Dude, Matt McMuscle, Scott the Wise, Civil Eleven, G-Man Lives, Emmeru, Harley Quinn, Badlands, and more all made. But here, I wasn't able to really make Charlie, Muda, and Zack. Now that just fucking sucks right there. I put those three guys into any games that I can cause they're some of my favorite content creators. Do I look like a happy camper to you? Didn't think so. Another complaint is the lack of outfits and armors. While in older games we chose a piece of an outfit based on different categories starting out with head, torso, and legs in DW5e. After that they slowly expanded to include more parts like gloves and feet. We saw older outfits come back in each new Empire's expansion, which wasn't a bad thing as they added even more with each entry. So we just kept getting more and more content. Awesome. Yes. Now that sounds awesome, right? Damn right! Well, they decided to... Uh-oh! They got rid of everything in favor of new pieces and to resell some older outfits as overpriced DLC. Gotta love that level of greed and laziness. The new pieces aren't even good, hell the whole system just sucks as well. Now instead of things going together, everything feels like it's random stuff found at a goodwill mixed together and that's called your ass kicking outfit bitch. We were supposed to make our own outfit! Overall, I wasn't enjoying the character creator this time around. Why is it so hard to find pieces that match, let alone look good together? This wasn't an issue all the way back in DW5e where we first could actually customize our characters to a better extent. For some reason, now it's just... <sighs> I fucking hate it. God damn it! It also doesn't help that things don't automatically change as you use sliders and select hairs, outfits, and more. Nope, instead, now you have to manually confirm every little change. Now that doesn't sound bad at first, but here's what you'll experience. Let's say you wanted to change your cheekbone with a slider. In older games, it automatically changed as you chose your degree on the slider of left to right from negative 100 to positive 100. Dan! Oh, right, 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 right. But here, they decided to make it after every time you adjust the slider, it will not display any changes till you hit the confirmation button, which is enter in this broken PC port. Just as delete is the K key. Scud. That's good shit right there. I'm gonna need every last drop of this. So yep, every time you adjust a slider or select a hair or outfit piece, be sure to manually confirm it or nothing will change. And this can lead to canceling any alterations you were trying to make in the first place. Overall, the editor just fucking sucks. Don't help either that all outfit pieces are called Type 1, Type 2, Type 3. The fuck is this? Now clothing in game has to be gender neutral? Fuck you! I ain't it. This makes it even harder to select clothing as you have to manually go over each one, one by one, hitting confirmation to see what Type 5 arms is or Type 7 leg wear. Whatever happened to the list system in DW7E and DW8E? Hell, in DW8E we can see all outfit parts, select our color, and choose entire outfits or parts to mix and match with ease. Here we cannot. Fuck it. We're moving on to conquest mode. Oh yeah, this game doesn't even have anything outside of officer edit and conquest mode. Yep, they removed free mode, banner edit, soldier edit, horse edit, kingdom edit, and scenario edit. We can no longer make anything other than samey looking people and playing the single restrictive mode. I'm out. So when it comes to playing the game, it's even more restrictive than ever. You can only play pre-made scenarios or DLC ones. You can no longer create or even set up one. Yep, you want to start in a certain territory, let alone have more than one? Too bad, go play the older games. Now, you can only have one, and it's randomly selected every time you play. Yep, so once you've chosen your officer and who will be in your kingdom, 
to which you cannot name anymore since Kingdom Edit was removed that was introduced in DW70. Wait, what? You have to exit and redo it all over again just to get the territory you want. Don't want Hefe? Exit and come back, redo everything and hope your preferred territory to be selected this time. Or just keep repeating again and 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 again until the game finally decides to give you what you want. It's... it's awful. Now remember, there's roughly 24 territories in the game to be randomly selected from for you. Yeah, you cannot alter who's in what territory either anymore. You cannot customize other kingdoms or give them different amounts of territory. The entire customization aspect from Empires has been gutted. Whatever, let's get this review over with. ま、やることやってりゃ、気は巡ってくるだろう。あなたの才が欲しいんです。僕と一緒に戦ってくれませんか? <笑>なんだそれ。器がでかすぎんだろ。All your usual kingdom actions return with nothing really new or changed. You can still increase your gold or food income through investments in trade or even forge alliances. Before you even do these though, every 6 months you have to set up how your officers will act through diplomacy, investment, recruiting new officers and more soldiers. Afterwards, you can set which territory connected to yours you want to invade, if any. After that, we have miracles to set up with a maximum of three. These vary depending on different factors, but mostly revolve around increasing soldier count, food count, gold count, etc. Sure. One annoying thing, however, is the sheer cost of invading in this empire's expansion, so expect to rarely ever get the chance to invade because you don't have the right amount of food and or soldiers. It's annoying, and much in line with Samurai Wars 4 empires in that regard. However, there, it wasn't as much of a chore to combat these requirements as it was, is here in DW9E. Doesn't matter. As you make decisions, your fame type will increase depending on the tagged action. So being kind will increase your benevolence, in turn leading to scenes like these occurring. If you play your cards right, you may even appease the people through benevolence, leading you to become a renowned good lord.
they did decide to keep the open world concept for the base game, however now it's entirely pointless as you run around an even more barren open world than the base game. But hey, this is the only way to interact with other officers and recruit new ones is by hitting several long loading screens and navigating terrible UI just to see the same exact cutscenes over and 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 over again. Yoshi, Sekkakno Tagada. Tabete nonde. Tatakai no ekyo yashinao. But hey, you may be thinking I'm exaggerating, right? I wasn't, as this is how it all works. But hey, if you do this enough times during several real world hours and in game turns, you could build a high enough of a relationship ranking to get them to join your stroll. But only one officer can join you. Now, what can you do? Run around a giant Ubisoft-style, lifeless, pointless open world, of course. Really? Ow! Oh my god, how exciting! But hey, at least you can find randomly spawning in and despawning out of nowhere bandits, wolves, and bears. What are they for? To kill for tiny amounts of gold. Yeah. Now you can grind here forever to get money instead of waiting for the next turn to get income. But, uh, but a kind of strolling, besides how stupid and boring and pointless it all is, is the fact it takes up your turn. Yep, only one action per turn is still a thing. Now I could excuse that in DW70 as it wasn't an overall quality game. But in a terrible game like this, it really makes things even more dog shit. Nig, nig, nig. So on to the terrible, terrible combat and redesigned Empire battles. Oh dear god, what did they think they were doing? What were they thinking? Battles of old are now scrapped in favor of sieges, which on paper sounds okay till you play them and realize they made battles even more restrictive and repetitive as every battlefield has the same exact layout with no variation. <laughs> On top of this, combat is broken in this port. Yes, not only is it broken to navigate the UI, combat itself doesn't function right as well, as all face buttons use the RB attacks instead of your normal. Doesn't matter what you try to do in the options menu, it cannot be fixed. It's hard coded to play like this. They broke the PC port. So get ready for repetitive, clunky, broken combat for several hours as you replay the same exact battles. Cartman, come on, that looks like shit. Dynasty Warriors 9 combat was already terrible, but this takes it to a whole new level of shittery. <laughs> Stratagems themselves are a joke as well, but more on that later. For now, invasions themselves are repetitive, samey, boring, and just plain... Plain... Ass! Doesn't help either since you cannot bring anyone into battle as officers have unrealistic resource requirements to bring into battle making it most likely to be a one-sided battle against you. Even during defensive battles, this will occur. On top of this, your officers cannot be selected for most battles. They decided to make your officers just randomly run around the world and cannot be used most of the time when you need them, either for fighting or for fun. What? 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 Oh, but that's not all. They won't even let you pick the battle music anymore. Shit the fuck! Your troop count just magically drains rapidly as well, even if you're doing good, the game automatically drains your troops at a faster rate than the enemies, which in turn will lead your forces to weaken. I'm sorry, what the f But hey, defensive battles, 
are better, right? <laughs> right? なのが揃ったもんだ。あんたのおかげだな。ありがとうよ。身に余るお言葉。今後一層精進いたします。Every battle is the same, either defensive or invasion. It's never different as your troop count will magically deplete faster than Kesa's blood sugar levels. Oh damn! You think in defensive battles, you'd get an edge, since you know, you're defending a freaking castle walled city, but nope, the enemy will always have the advantage since you can only have one or two officers with you on the battlefield. But they can have several. Lovely. But hey, if you fight enough battles, maybe you can get a sworn sibling for no reason whatsoever in this game since being sworn brothers has nothing to do gameplay wise or story wise, unlike in previous games. I was defending territory more so than invading because this game won't let you set up anything nor create your own scenarios, so you will always start with a single territory and if you start the game with more than one officer in your kingdom, it will go bankrupt fast. You cannot do anything without money or food, on top of the fact you can't even use most of your officers in your kingdom during battles just because of that. I mean, my kingdom is about to go extinct because of the broken PC port, and I'm being punished? Fuck you, Omega Farce. Unlike in Dynasty Warriors 7 and 8, it's not impossible to really build relationships with other officers in this game, as the progression system has been highly nerfed in favor of vast repetition, so get ready to constantly interact with officers every turn during a stroll, seeing the same exact dialogue and cutscene, or fighting so many battles you lose count, just so you can stand a chance at... But when it does finally happen, it's satisfying, ain't gonna lie, I mean it's Zhu wrong. If the Naman Queen who's a descendant of the Fire God says she wants to crush her pelvis, you don't say no.
あんた今日は一段といい男だね思わず見とれちまったよ乱世が終わった後もずっと一緒にいてください約束ですよアンライクンダイスティウォーズ7 where you had a lot of strategy to play with as stratagems were a thing that could alter the entire playing field in DWAE they downgraded them to stupid things like a fire blast around you or to slightly heal you and that's it <laughs> This tradition of downgrading strategy continues into DW9E. As there is nothing unique or special about stratagems anymore, they literally just cast fire or heal you slowly over time, and that's it. No more getting ambushes, floods, fires burning entire portions of the battlefield, summoning cavalry or elite units, spawning in juggernauts, spawning in a volley of arrows, you name it. All of that was removed. The entire game. Is just constantly recapturing the same exact base and the same exact layout of a battlefield with zero variety or pathways to take, unlike in older games. Oh, 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 not so good, huh? Not so good. There's very few cutscenes in this Empire's expansion. And the ones that are here are mostly old ones imported into DW9's engine from DW6E, DW7E, and DW8E. These are just either too short and feels like they were cut off at the wrong time, or they dragged on with nothing happening but silence and nodding as if they ran out of voice acting budget money. Plus, it don't help, most of the music being used is from older games and not newer stuff, which is sad because previous Empire games would use their base game Extreme Legends and Empires expansions soundtracks. But here, for example, we got music straight out of Dynasty Warriors 3 in this cutscene that just abruptly ends. The song is Endless Fight and feels out of place. Hope they do more of that for this, and uh, yeah, that's really about it. So, yeah. Overall, cutscenes are a mixed bag. They're nowhere near as good as Dynasty Warrior 7 Empires, but they're better than Dynasty Warrior 4 and 5 Empires with how little they had to offer in turn. Yet that's no excuse for not keeping up a standard, let alone increasing it. A sequel should always do better than the previous in every aspect as possible. Otherwise, what is the point of a sequel? I'd argue with that. On to the other section. And yes, the PC port is clearly broken. Nothing works right, and having to juggle between a controller and your keyboard just to barely play this barely functional game is ridiculous. In yeah. Yeah. Tech McCoy has made their worst PC port of all time which is truly a feat given their previous ports of games have always been sketchy. Can I get an amen? Honestly though, even if it wasn't for the bad port, I doubt this game would have been good since, you know, the bad cinematics, the lack of actions, the lack of strategy, the lack of English, the lack of meaning and reason. It's just a terrible game that tried to mix DW9's garbage combat, garbage graphics, garbage engine, garbage open world, and garbage garbage with empires. In turn, in which it did indeed succeed, yet as a good game, it is not. Just go play DW, DWAE on PC 
or Xbox and avoid this atrocity. Or preferably, go play DW7E if you're on PlayStation. Every single thing is hidden behind a loading screen, and these loading screens are lifeless with nothing to them on top of being overly long as well. Seriously, these things range from 20 seconds a pop to a whopping minute a pop. Seriously? Every single event, conversation, battle, choice, menu option, everything is behind a whopping 20 second to 1 minute, if not sometimes even longer, loading screen? What the fuck is this, the PlayStation 1? Honestly, on top of the non-stop load screens and their ever-growing life, <laughs> this game runs poorly too, but of course, Shadowplay doesn't always record accurately. Just like with DW9, I noticed a lot of the frame rate drops and stuttering, let alone popping, wasn't really captured in my recordings. What the hell, Shadowplay? <gasps> this machine is rigged! But still, the game does have a lot of issues keeping a steady frame rate. At first, when I played on my older computer, I thought it was my dated CPU and lower amount of RAM. But nope, even with more RAM and a higher end CPU, this game still chugs along. Not to mention all of the LOD issues. Hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. You can see them predominantly in cutscenes. What the hell is even that? I remember in my first playthrough back in the day that my officers and I gathered around to watch a mountain in the distance render from a PS1 mountain into a PS2 mountain and then we cheered. Sadly I couldn't find anything like that in game, but I know it did happen. Sure, buddy. Now that this train wreck is over, I can make a compilation for Dynasty Warriors 9 and its expansion, then move on to the very last Dynasty Warriors game I've got left. This being Dynasty Warriors 7 Empires, the pinnacle of Empires experiences, and I'm eager to finally wrap up this long journey and of course finally cover one of my favorite games of all time. So let's get to the score of DW9E and get ready for whenever DW70 is ready to go. Alright, popcorn's ready! At the end of the day, Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires is single-handedly one of the worst games ever made and also the worst Empires game. Looking back, despite a lot of problems with the very first Empires being DW4E, at least that game worked. <laughs> I wanted to give this game another chance, especially since I upgraded my computer earlier in the year so maybe it would've played better and looked better on a newer rig. But no, this game is fugly and runs poorly no matter what system you play it on. This game engine is clearly not built for its own purposes. Oh well, it is what it is. DW9E could have been good, but the lackluster restrictive samey officer edit experience, the bad controls, the broken combat, and terrible UI navigation, on top of lacking any strategy or meaningful experiences with your fellow officers, and many other hiccups, DW9E is a garbage game not worth playing. Go play DW8E if you're on PC, otherwise go play DW7E if you're on PlayStation, for the best Empire's experience to date. Well, I'm glad to be done with this piece of shit game, and it's base game. Time for another compilation as we approach the end of our journey here. I cannot wait to be done with this series, 
I'm getting all wired out. あんたはどんな大人になるのかね。ま、元気に育ってくれりゃ、それで十分さね。ついに僕に子供が。なんて幸せなんだろう。<笑> Anyways, that's it for this video. See you all later.